How are you? Good. Oh, How's everything going? It's coming. Yeah. Bye.
Welcome to the School Planning Committee meeting of February 15, 2023. This meeting is open to the public and ECAT will be streaming and recording it. The first item on the agenda are the open session minutes of January 18, 2023. Um, I just have a couple of edits. Does anyone else have any questions, comments, or edits? Okay. So the only edits I have are, let's see, page three under the paragraph that says executive session. The vote there was actually a roll call vote. And then on the next page, on the adjournment, the vote was not a roll call vote, it was a hand raised vote. So does anyone want to make a motion to approve the minutes of January 18, 2023 with those edits? So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Great. Next item are the executive session minutes of January 18, 2023. So if anyone has any comments or edits on, the, on these minutes, we can't discuss in open session, but I can hold the minutes to discuss at a later time. Does anyone want me to hold the minutes? Okay, I'll take a motion to approve but not release the minutes of the executive session minutes of January 18, 2023. Motion to accept and not, not release. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Great. Next item, construction progress update. Walter? So I'm actually going to have Chris run through the construction photos and the progress update. Okay. Is that yes. right? All right, good evening, everyone. <laughs> All right, I want to start the uh, construction photos with kind of a visual of phase one. The new building um, came out great. We have a lot of progress that we made. Uh, we're still working on punch list items. Uh, now to focus over to phase two, uh, the abatement and demo portion. As you can see, the windows are still intact. Uh, they put out protective wraps so they can pull the windows out. Anything that's been affected. Um, on the left-hand side, you can still see the windows. In the background of the windows is the protective plastic. On the right-hand side, you can see the mini excavator, the machine. Uh, it was used to actually go in and grab the windows, pull it out strategically, and place it on the wrap so they could wrap everything up and get the material off the site as quick as possible. Uh, this is what it looks like on the left hand side without any of the windows on there. Um, the team went in and they scraped out um, all the windows, all the fixtures, and anything that was in the building that needed to come out through the abatement process. On the right hand side they put the protective plastic back up um, and you can see in the next group of photos um, what it looks like for some of the non-traditional work, uh, removing some of the block, removing the walls, and as you look kind of the left picture on the right hand side they're strategically placing you know, metal and certain materials so they can remove it and recycle it. On the right-hand side, sorry, the right-hand side, you can start to see the building coming down. I don't know if you saw outside today, most of that building is coming down yeah. very rapidly. Mm -hmm. and the it's right there, moving. but it's dark, but yeah. it's, it's oh, down. I'm right there. You know, just from lunch till we walked over here, yes. it was a massive, improvement of work. Um, they're getting the material off the site rather quickly. Next slide, please. Um, I'm just kind of going phase by phase as the week went on. Um, as you can see, all the steel, um, they had the trucks coming in. I don't know if you saw the big red trucks coming in and removing all the material. Uh, I still see some of the block on the right-hand side, but the machines were very quick to knock those down. And strategically with the water hose, making sure we didn't you know, bring up any dust or debris and blow it towards the school or any of the abutters. Um, little by little, you're starting to see the foundation of the old school park view. And this is what it looked like around lunchtime this afternoon. I don't know if we'll give one more. Oh, so that was the last one. Um, most of that material has been moved and through the process this week, they're going to little by little take pieces of that building down. Um, currently, they're 80% complete, 80 to 85% complete, um, depending on which great you talk to, <laughs> uh, with the abatement process in the building. So phase one portion of the building is complete. Now they're, moving, they're working on phase two, so hopefully by the end of this week we can get that uh, abatement wrapped up in some of the non-traditional work, and then we can remove, start removing the rest of that existing building. How long about do you think the removal of the remainder of that building will take? Uh, a couple more weeks probably to wrap everything up. I think most of the piles that you see there next week during February vacation, but they have to come in and get the slab and foundation pieces, which will be a little less demo looking than this, but sure. it is still technically demo. Great. 
All right, um, sorry, the left-hand side is the, the picture from January 13th of last month. As you can see, um, they were, the, some of that building is still standing. On the right-hand side, you can see the building starting to come down the back end of the picture. Um, and towards the front end of the picture, you can see Banner is currently uh, continuing the abatement on that side of the building on phase two. Uh, so that's the only time-lapse video or time-lapse camera we have up right now. Um, and then Chris Urbano earlier today sent out the link to the time-lapse videos so everyone mm -hmm. can see the three camera uh, time-lapse videos. So you guys have that link. Uh, if anyone needs help accessing, just feel free to respond to that email and let us know within a system. Walter, before you go on, go on to ask your question. Yeah. yeah, I had some questions about just, this is about signage actually, um, whether or not there'll be a stop sign at the end of Bankston and Spooner Street with a, the, a and I, I don't know if it's going to be an exit entrance near my house. Coming out. Coming out. Bankston onto Spooner. Yes. Is there a, is there a I, don't, I don't know offhand. I don't know offhand. Okay. We can check. Yeah, but shoot, that, shoot me a text or an email tomorrow, and we'll check the drawings. And, and if I'd be surprised if there were one, but we'll check the drawings and make and see if there is one there. Okay. And what about any other signage? Is there any no parking sign or anything? For where? For let's say across the street from well, the there, house. There right is outside. parking there. There's parking spaces that go there's, in there. No, not where the spaces are. Yeah. But where the curbing will be. I don't think there's any no parking signs called for um, it's going to be sidewalk and curb so I don't there's not really an option to park there is curb okay so you think the curbing will be sufficient I, to stop anyone from par well they park they're parking now in front of um, the house the front side on the Spoon Street side I just don't know if they'd start parking on the um, on the other side or if they'd be allowed to park because I didn't know what, if the traffic uh, pattern yeah, yeah, kind of a final street. If it's a two-way street. Yeah, the public street. If, but it's going to be a two-way street for Bankston Street? Yeah. 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 Okay. okay, so if it is, this unlikely there will be parking. Yeah, I, there's no parking spaces called for on Bankston right, yeah. Street I'm other than the ones that right. I'm concerned in. about entering and exiting my driveways. There's no parking across from your driveway entry. There's no parking spaces. There's the grand. No, I know, I know that. That's that's. But I'm just saying that people may still mm -hmm. do it. Is your oh, concern? Oh yeah. Well, people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People do now. a lot of things mm -hmm. you don't expect. Yeah. yeah. Could couldn't that be a result of a lack of parking full spaces parking that are not right. Yeah. right now? Um, so, I mean, I think the, the whole certainly something to keep an eye on once right. those parking spaces are completed yeah. and people are parking there. Then could we, if, if to add some signage? That's what I was going to say. When the additional parking spaces are put in. Uh, I thought those were for the administration. I don't know who they're des designated I thought they for. were basically designated for your team coming over to the... Um, on Bankston? Yes. I don't believe There's about 10 spaces there, there, and I thought on the original plan that those spaces were designated for administration. Um, it probably will be. You're talking about uh, alongside the field on Bankston Street? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it probably will be, but... Okay. Well, well that's that what I recall from the plans that, that I saw earlier. Well, it's not staff that's parking there. Parents. It's parents. Yeah. Our staff is not parking on the street there. No, no, no. Yeah, but it's I mean, parents. when we're, it's we're finding, as I sort of reported last time, that a lot of parents are are trying to sort of circumvent the pickup process. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so they <laughs> have indicated, for example, that their children are quote unquote walkers, and they come out of the building uh, in the back of administration outside of the courtyard, mm -hmm. and so parents are parking there, and then when the walkers are released, they pull their car up and get their kids and go back. And so we're working very hard to try to help them understand how problematic that is. Uh, it's, it's very difficult. We're hopeful that with the, the queue that is going to ultimately be in place for next year, that they will be more cooperative, uh, but right now, I'm not sure what I can do, to be honest. We've asked, we've pleaded, we've, I've gone out to Cars and Knots and asked them to please move, uh, and then they just come right back. So no, I, I basically I'm But it's not staff, I can assure you. I'm pa no, I, know, I understand that. Because I, I would I, I, remedy that, but it's I'm just. I'm very patient about the conditions now because I know it will, will change. I'm only looking to what they do now 
as, a, as an indication of what right. they'll do later. Right. And what they, many of them do now, not, I can't say many, but at least a half a dozen to a dozen, mm -hmm. will park on Spooner Street, there might be different ones, and they'll park across the street from my house, they'll walk in and walk back mm -hmm. out. It, which I don't think is quite safe right now because it's there's all no it is there's no sidewalks in that right. area. But anyway, I'm just thinking going forward, the same thing may happen because then they'll have the sidewalk. I hope walk. not, but I we are aware of it and mm -hmm. we are trying. I'm not sure what other recourse we have, mm -hmm. but um, we we will continue trying. I apologize. No, no, it's not necessary. It's just that when you go going forward, I just wondered yeah. if there was going to be. Well, staff is having a problem too because um, some parents are doing that in the morning as well. So they'll park and then walk their children around the other end of the building. And then when staff tries to find a space, which are very no limited, space. they don't have one. So they will park on the side and they'll go into school. Then they have to get coverage to come out and move their cars after the parents. It's very problematic, but I haven't been able to, to get that through yet. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Unfortunately. <laughs> I know um, there's part of me that says even if there were no parking signs, they'd still park. They so we've still had them there park. When, when it was just park view, we had them out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and they still park. Right. The stop sign is at the end of Bankston. So as you approach Spooner, so there's no stop on Spooner. It's just Bankston going on to Spooner. Right. Great. Thank you. So certainly something to monitor mm -hmm. uh, once phase two is complete, and obviously something that the project can look at if. Yeah, and I, I mean, I want to make sure that that the public understands how appreciative we are of the hundreds of parents that have helped because we've gotten dismissal down to 13 minutes, mm -hmm. 14 minutes, 14 minutes. Wow. so, so really we really quick. appreciate mm -hmm. that cooperation yeah, and it that. just shows yeah. that we can have systems in place that work if we all work together. It is the few, unfortunately, that do make it inconvenient for our neighbors and for our staff, and we'll, we'll continue working on it. They are fast. Seems like a safety <laughs> issue, too, for the, for the kids. It, the kids it is. It's concerning. Lockers and then parents are trying to find them, and they're yeah. stopping and starting. And, you know. it, no, it's true. Hopefully that area will be less desirable in the final condition because it is, it's a two-way road there. Mm -hmm. So there's not, it, it's not a very wide road to have people parked along the curb. No, that's what, that's what, what I pass. thought too. When, once that granite curbing is there, you won't see people going back and forth. Right. But then when the, the fields open up, that's when there might mm -hmm. be an issue because they'll try to park there when the fields open up. Mm -hmm. Because you know how many parents go to all, all the events. And so that's when it's a problem. There's a parking lot basically not accessible right now due to construction Correct. fencing. That's right there too, right? So that, right. that'll that's, stay yeah. yes. and one project is complete and that's, you know, stone's throw from your, your right. home. But so have you hopefully been, you've seen the fields up at the high school and how full they get and how many parents park and they park all along, the, for all along the, the high school um, list. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was, that's in the future. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I'll go down there with you. We can charge for parking. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you all. No problem. All right. Uh, cash flow schedule update. Uh, bill to date, $71.8 million MSBA reimbursement to date, just over $28 million. Uh, pending MSBA audit is about $600,000. Uh, I believe we are getting very close to the, I think we're down to the 32 million roughly mark where that 95% estimated value is going to hit. Um, so we're, we're getting close to it at this point. Uh, construction look ahead. So for phase 1A, we have very little work to complete in the building. It's really a lot of punch lists. Um, some very limited mill work. You saw on the ramp there's a piece missing still. Um, we're waiting on getting that completed. Uh, lighting controls are still ongoing. Uh, pivot doors in the media center, the trim I believe is complete almost now. Uh, exterior caulking, signage, and then the remainder of the punch list. Uh, punch list monetization is due Saturday this week, uh, so that'll be going out hopefully Friday. Um, and that's uh, all the retainage needs to be released based off of that monetization um, by the town, so we'll work with the town on that end. Does that include outside signage or just inside braille signage? The signage there. The signage there is. That's not for our yeah, that's interior. the interior okay. signage, not Thanks. the exterior okay. signage. 
Um, and then on phase two, as Chris had mentioned, about 80% complete. Um, they did break the, so there's two phases, two, two sections of building that they're working on. They're abating the west side of Park View first, Old Park View. Um, they did stop at the foundation level. There's flashing and um, mastic that they need to remove on the foundation. Um, that's being separated from the building. Uh, it'll be taken out, um, but the abatement here is about 80% complete. Utility shutdowns are complete. Non-traditional work plan uh, within phase two is ongoing. Uh, demolition perm is in hand for the west side. Um, that demolition started on Monday. Site work is going to mobilize Friday, hopefully, um, to do some initial work. But then again on Monday, we'll see the site work contractor back on site. They are going to start, uh, just so everyone is aware, on Monday and, and potentially Tuesday, but I believe Monday, uh, the connector road at Columbus to the intersection of the middle school parking lot is going to be closed down. So you'll be able to access through the middle school parking lot during the vacation week and then out the access road. But that portion between Columbus and that little intersection is going to be closed. They need to tie in a structure and tie in drainage uh, into the retention pond and finish the retention pond. So the uh, principal and assistant principal of the middle school have been notified. They're aware. This is just during vacation week? This is just during vacation okay. week. They've been direct. They've been told they need to be done at 5 p.m. on Friday. They have acknowledged that they need to be done at 5 p.m. on Friday. Um, we will be on them every day. It is just one structure that needs to go in, thankfully. They're doing the investi investigative work on Friday so that they are aware if there are any issues. Um, so they are, are they're digging up the <coughs> lot? The road. The road? A piece of the road, a section of the road. Um, so if you stand where the retention pond is and look back towards the entry of Easton Middle School, there's a pipe that needs to be connected from the retention pond to a structure and then that will is abandoned in the in the road currently uh, it was called to be abandoned it's just an error that needs to be corrected so, so it's going to look like a patch there or? it will be a patch yes um, we have directed them to make it as clean as they can we will be out there to make them as linear as they can uh, we have that direction from dpw and engineering um, but a structure is a structure it's a large piece that needs to be so they should be able to do it uniformly they should be able to backfill it um, and get that in but it will be a patch unfortunately so be infrared yep so they'll they'll heat it up so it's blended to match so it won't look like a cold patch where you see a hard join but okay, it will be patched so if you're looking for it you'll probably see it where is the retention pond where is it? Yes. Uh, if you come out the connector road at the Columbus intersection, it's right there right on the there right, on right hand, hand side. side. Yep. Yep. It looks like a dump pile. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I that is a retention pond. I thought it sure. was, but I wasn't sure. Yep. Thank you. Um, so hopefully at the end of next week, it's looking a lot nicer. Um, so site work will begin, and then playgrounds and site improvements will follow that. Any questions on look ahead schedule? As of now, are we still on schedule? Their schedule says we're on schedule. Um, <laughs> our review of their schedule says they might not be on schedule. By so we we rejected that schedule submission that you see on the screen, and they are supposed to be resubmitting by the end of this week. Um, so. Uh, strict comparison of their original baseline schedule, they're around two to three weeks behind, but they're showing that they're on schedule by reducing the duration of other activities that are between now and April 28th, uh, but we have questioned the likelihood of them meeting those new reduced durations based on their inability to meet the old original performance durations and past performance. Yep. Are these things that could be further affected by weather? Um, some of it, yep. Yeah, some of it is definitely weather dependent. Um, uh, probably the, the concrete sidewalks and the paving are probably the two biggest weather kind of pieces. Um, the, the paving piece, they actually increase that duration. So I think that they're building in some weather protection, just understanding it's happening during the spring. Okay. Um, but some of the items like the play equipment, uh, it took them all of a month to install the smaller playground that you see out at the end of the swing here. 
um, and they've compressed the duration to two weeks for the future playground, which we do not think is attainable unless they tell us they're working multiple shifts and late nights and weekends, which they have provided no indication. So we rejected the schedule and required them to resubmit before we'll process their payment application. To be clear, the current delay is not attributable to some kind of weather issue. Right. right. They're yep. just behind. Yep, just behind. Their uh, abatement and demolition, so demolition was supposed to be underway uh, three weeks ago, and we just saw the first of it this week. And uh, demolition's also going faster than their current schedule shows, so they're probably going to make up a little bit of time. It's just a matter of will it be enough to wash. Yeah, you can yeah. see here they have 20 days of duration in there for building demolition. Um, that's three days worth of work. If they could take down that other half, they'd probably have that entire building minus the foundation done by the end of the week. Um, so they, they likely could make up some time depending on abatement. Is there any in impact from a functionality or things that need to get done? And why am I thinking that fields need to be in and ready by a certain amount of time so they can they have a yeah. season or they something? Have have two Would you say two seasons. growing seasons? Right. We're very close yeah. to, as it is, to missing the two spring, years, two yeah. Yeah. full Absolutely. spring growing season. We right. need a full, two full growing seasons. So if we can't get spring in, right then it will be fall and next spring, right. which means none of the fields would be ready until the following oh, fall. fall. So it, the, it is... Right. There is an impact. Of there is a definite impact. Two to three weeks behind on the schedule. Okay. Yep. And this is, this is a, a great schedule? This is, who provides the schedule? This is great, yep. Yeah, okay, yep. thank you. This is great, and um, so we'll, we'll keep everyone posted. We can get a resubmitted we can let the committee know where they stand. They're, they're going to still continue yep. to show that they're on track for April 28. Um, they're just going to provide justification on how they're going to do it and whether or not they execute is really hearsay at this point. So there's very little that we can do until we show that they weren't able to execute and we can assess damages. Okay. What is their incentive to complete on time and meet the schedule? What there's, is the incentive? There is a liquidated damages clause in the contract, mm -hmm. so $2,500 per day. Um, and that's something that we have spoken at length about on prior phases and missed deadlines. I know it's something that Easton is serious about assessing. Uh, and this internally program. with them, it's money, money on them spending on spending on themselves to get. You know, they have incentive just without that to get out of here as fast as they can to get the next out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. um, but on top of that, the town also has incentive in the PMA. Do you have a damages? Yep. So one one bit of good news is the original schedule showed them doing all of the demolition before they even mobilized the site subcontractor. So one change they're making is mobilizing the site subcontractor to do what they can before the building is completely down. So they're also going to make up some time there. Um, so just need them to, to map it out and show us a path to completion. And until they do that, we are not going to move forward with any invoices. Uh, contingency update. 90% uh, of the project's schedule time has elapsed. We have 9% remaining. Uh, currently, we have uh, $677,000 in current exposure. Uh, we are preparing change order 11 to head over to the select board for the meeting on the 27th. Uh, that uh, change order is going to be roughly $330,000. Um, it does have some large items in it, being the um, unforeseen tank, at the or the abandoned tank at the corner um, it also has the structure out at um, Columbus Ave and a couple other larger ones um, that could be included or that are included um, but those are quite a bit of the 300,000 um, change orders to date are the 1.7 million still um, and available in construction contingency uh, is still the 1.35 million Again, that's if everything was executed um, that is currently uh, being, dis some of them are currently being disputed. Uh, soft cost contingency remains available at 1.2 million, inclusive of the 900 that was authorized for FF&E. And then the bid savings, uh, other than the wastewater treatment plant, which was anticipated, still has the 9.7 million uh, carried within it. Uh, so doing well on construction contingency um, as we head towards the end of the project. I believe we will carry this item into executive session, so we'll skip over that for now. Uh, FF&E IT budget update. It's going to be blurry. Um, 
So the items you see on the right in yellow uh, are items that we that have a uh, point PLS award number, so far, farthest column on the left. Uh, all of those items have a short form contract and been sent over to the select board for their approval at their next meeting as well, which will be with change order 11. Uh, the two items that you see carried below, uh, PMA is still tracking both of these. There are still likely some a couple of credits and a cup and one more FF and E um, add or adjustment that will happen. Um, we are working through some issues still, um, and one of these items may go through the construction contingency budget uh, to get it completed. That's the um, item you see right there, the CAF2 projector integration. We may work with the electric electrician that uh, was under break to get that completed as well instead of working through these guys. Um, fundable under either bucket, uh, not an issue on either on either one. So over on the left you see the 28,000 remaining. That is 14,000 of items that is carried right there in yellow and then 14,100 that is uh, remaining in that bucket. Um, doesn't include the credits that we are going to be taking back on a couple of them. Um, so still in good shape on FF&E and IT. Wastewater treatment plant construction closeout update. We did have a what we thought would be a final closeout meeting today. Uh, there is one item remaining to be complete in the wastewater treatment plant. They are anti siphon valves. Uh, the treat oh, plant is working fine right now without them. They are required, they will go in, they're on order. Uh, we are awaiting a response from the contractor over there as to when they will be in hand and when they will go in. They take about two to three days to put in. Um, they did submit their substantial completion package um, and their closeout package. Uh, that's being reviewed and change orders are being reviewed with them. We do have a meeting with them March 1st uh, to review eight or nine open PCOs. Some were rejected, some are being reviewed uh, internally still. So that was everything we had if you want to sure. take it back over. Thank you, Walter. Sure. Okay, so now I'm going to make a motion to enter into executive session, and we will return to open session for the purpose of discussing the deployment of security personnel or devices or strategies with respect thereto. And in my opinion, having this discussion in public would be detrimental to the security of the Blanche A. Ames Elementary School. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, we're going to do a roll call vote. Fulginetti. Yes. Cedarbaum. Yes. Weintraub. Yes. Reed. Yes. Vamosi. Vamosi, yes. Cabral. Yes. Martin. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Carlson. Yes. Wiseman, yes. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you.
pretty full. Yeah, oh, when I saw the parents, I found the other place, but there were so many parents that were rushing in and picking up, and I was like amazed at that. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, welcome back to the school planning committee meeting. During the executive session, we discussed and voted to approve a change order for the purposes of implementing security measures and devices in the Blanche A. Ames Elementary School. Okay. Um, Walter, anything else? Uh, nope. Just want to update everyone. Our next uh, SBC meetings are March 15th, 2023. Mm -hmm. And April 19, <laughs> 2023. <laughs> <laughs> last month, sorry. Sorry again. It's my fault. Um, I don't. Yeah, Chad, Chris, or Dan, any new business on PMA or Perkins Inn? Uh, Jack, I'll turn it back over to you for any new business okay. you or any school planning committee member might have. Thanks. Does anyone have anything they want to discuss, raise, questions, anything? Okay, great. Well, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great night.